So earlier today, Veronica was recording some video or something. She was on the computer looking at the morning messages. Now, the morning messages, in case you don't know, sometimes Veronica's laying around in bed first thing in the morning before she gets out of bed. We give her a message. She texts it to a friend of hers who types it up and then emails it back to her. It's interesting because it's not channeling like we're channeling now, but it's, it's a hybrid kind of thing because Veronica's there, obviously, and she's texting, so she's working the phone, but we're giving her information in a way that's kind of different than the way we do it here. We're practicing expanding the repertoire a little bit. It's an energetic thing that we're laying down with her by doing this new thing. She's like, oh, it is. We're like, yes, it is. So we're, <laughs> she didn't know that part. We're teaching her system how to integrate with our energy in new ways, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of sitting down and talking like this, it's a very quiet internal kind of processing that just comes out the thumbs, okay? So, and a lot of times the subjects of the morning messages are the things that are going on with her, uh, the things that are bugging her, the things that are troubling her the questions she would ask if she was sitting at the microphone, for instance, right? So they're very personal as well. Um, but of course, being the fact that she's in this gig with us and you guys are all part of her life, she just puts it on the internet for you guys to look at. And then she got the idea to make videos of them. So she records these little videos and puts them up on YouTube. Yeah? Have you seen any of them? No. Mm -hmm. They're cool. They're fun. And you get to learn more about Veronica in the process because she talks about them too. So if you ever want to know what it's like to be her, there you go. Good way to get to know Veronica a bit more. But backstory, that in the process of all that, she, back in August, did two posts without our help. We say that in quotes, because we're never too far away. But she wrote two posts, two little essays that she posted as morning messages. And one of them was this list. Uh, oh, she didn't, she didn't write that part. One of them was this list of things that she has become aware that we have taught her. And we thought it'd be fun to talk about the items on the list. So you guys could do a compare you to you, or in your case, maybe hear it for the first time, and see where you are with the things on the list. Hmm. We're going to have a little water. <laughs> Mary George said, hmm. It's a good idea, trust us. Because at the end of the year, when you're already kind of hmm, it's a good time to see where you stand, see what's important to you, and feel that sense of progress, right? Why not? Kind of a review, if nothing else can be described as it. So the first one is neutral observation of what is true now. Now, let's break it down. What is true now, we've done four million times. Core tool, never gonna let you down. What is true now? Wearing gray slacks, wearing brown shoes, at the meeting, whatever it is. Brings you into the moment, brings you into your body, helps you see what's really going on with you rather than what the survival instinct tells you is going on with you, which if you watch last week's meeting, it's danger, 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 and more danger, okay? Dead. Dead. Dead, yeah. What is true now gives you the opportunity to say, I'm here. Neutral observation of what is true now helps you not to see it as danger, 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 quote, dead. So we like that she combined these two. Neutral observation of what is true now. You could take that one sentence and probably solve most of your problems from that one sentence if you could really do it authentically and automatically. Neutral observation, meaning I'm not going to have preconceived notions. I'm not going to have judgments. I'm not going to decide ahead of time what's really happening here. I'm going to say it is. So I'm going to be as neutral as possible. And remember, neutral isn't numb. Neutral isn't no boundaries. Neutral is simply I'm going to bring as few preconceived notions to this moment as I possibly can. And I'm going to have as few judgments once I'm there as I can. Because you know preconceived notions and judgments generate static. Static is the cloud bank that goes up between you 
and observing the reality of infinite possibilities that surround you. You see how all those things dovetail together? Making sense? Mm -hmm. Neutral observation is of what is true now. So the next time you do what is true now, see if you're neutral or if you're in a preconceived notion or a judgment. Be a good thing to know. And if you are, don't be mean to yourself. Right? I'm not having to remind too many people about the don't be mean to yourselves, but there are a couple that need the little reminder and we're not going to name names. <laughs> well, busted, but that's okay. The truth of the matter is, it's very easy when you start to apply these kinds of tools to your life to feel a sense of like, why the hell haven't I done this sooner? Or I've spent 40 years not doing this. I somehow suck because you're traditionally programmed to find I suck in the world. Because so few people don't think they suck most of the time, right? So when you start going, oh, what is true now? Oh my God, I brought a preconceived notion to the moment. I'll go to I suck instead of going to neutral, right? You want to come back to neutral. Neutral doesn't include being mean to yourself.